It's gonna be a two-parter. This is the part two that was promised, and what it is, is breaking in the more than fishing surf rod. So this first part is gonna be fishing with the champs. And by that, this man right here, Luis Sanchez and his brother Omar over here, they won the more than fishing tournament and that was about two months ago now. But before even that, Luis actually by an eighth of an inch or so came in second place for the Surf Perch Roundup, which was our tournament. Second place with 42 and a quarter inches, Luis Sanchez. <laughs> so back to back winnings twice in 2021. The crazy thing about that is we didn't really get to hear from them. So in this video, you're gonna get to hear from them. You're gonna get to hear about what their mindset was when they were coming out fishing and the competition just we want to hear about it we just really didn't get to um, because of all the things that were going on around the two tournaments but guys this is exciting they've included me at their spot uh, where it all went down so <laughs> you're gonna learn something today and hopefully it helps you guys if you end up joining a tournament did you guys already spend it yes oh, oh yeah for sure that's long gone <laughs> got bills to pay you know so <laughs> That's long gone. I've had a couple of fishing stuff, but I'm trying to get my kayak going, so trying to do that. Go. Yeah. How long have you been fishing this area? This area since like maybe like three, four months before your tournament. Yeah. Oh, okay. You, you guys were out here for hours. Okay, so oh, yeah. it was a three-day tournament. Yep. Like, how was that? Like, all together, just standing back, looking at the whole experience. Like, what was that like? What comes up to you guys first? A grind. Long days. I mean, we were out here. For sure, eight hours a day. We kind of At planned least. on, yeah, we kind of planned on being out here, eating out here, and yeah. Day one was pretty good. I mean, you're just stoked for the tournament. And then by day three, you're struggling to get up out of bed. We're trying to go for a 12 hour day, and by like six hours, we're like, you know what? Let's catch a few undersized ones, because it had to be 12 inches to submit. So we got a few 10s, a few 11s, and we just cooked those up while we waited, and then got back out there. Once we found out that it was close, we were, who were we up with? Die Hard, I think it was? Yeah. Once we found out that it was a tie, we kind of had to grind that last day. I mean, we didn't really have a, a choice if we wanted to win, so we did what we had to do. And it's all, it's all sand? Standing, yeah, standing there and just casting over. I think that was the game changer for, uh, for June's tournament, just because we knew what was like past these rocks. Like, we yeah. saw the structure. Do you guys remember like going into going into day two, like what the leaderboard was like? I mean, I think we were tied completely, but they had it by, oh no, no, they were beating us by like maybe a quarter or half an inch. Something like that. But we just, we had the most fish, I think is what it was. So as long as we tied with them, we knew, you know, we were going to have the lead. Yeah. But luckily that the last day, I think we got a 14 and a half, 14 and a half and a 15? Something crazy. It was it was insane, yeah. but it worked out. All right, so this is more familiar for what the Sanchez boys are known for. They like fishing these rocks for these perch. Woo! <laughs> Let's see. What was the game planning like? Do you guys like have to talk to each other a lot? Like, hey, what's our strategy? What are we gonna do? Like, do we know where we're gonna go? So we, I mean, we knew we were gonna fish here. We usually stick together. And like, we like to talk to each other as we're throwing the, the bait. But that third day, we kind of just split up. We kind of just, we kind of knew it was go time. You know, if you find them, you find them, just keep throwing it. But it was just jerk baits the whole time. That's what we kind of told our, ourselves that we were gonna do. We've already been out here and we kind of see that the big ones bite on the jerk bait most of the time. So that's what we were kind of going for that third day. Yeah, I think how he said, we, we normally just go together, but once he texts me, he's like, hey, what's the word for today? I was like, okay, he found a spot. He's got something going. But yeah, the first day we knew we were coming out here after the first tournament, uh, that we knew. But then as soon as they didn't hit on our normal spot, it was just like, okay, where are we going now? Where are we going from here? First two days were a little bit slower. And then the third day, once we found out kind of where the structure is, how the water's gonna work, it was a little bit easier trying to uh, fish around that. Oh, 
Oh, fish. Oh, jeez. That is a fatty, dude. That is a tank. Look at that tank, guys. That is a tank, dude. I thought I got snagged at first. Yeah. Dude, he was close. He was real close. He hit so freaking close, too. That was amazing. Do you remember kind of what the conditions were like that day? That was, was that the king tide? I'm not sure. Red tide? Yeah, it was definitely the tide. It was the king tide, tide right? Yeah. Was it like 11, like 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock, just like kind of like today, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it was a few hours into high tide and then it just, I mean, it dropped completely. And it was our first time fishing a king tide like that. So we really didn't know what to expect out of that. So it was, it was interesting. It was. Walk us through like day one. Like day one was really successful for you guys, huh? Like I think day three was the best Day for three us. was our best. Really? It was clutch that last day. Oh, last yeah. day. Knowing I mean, that they had the lead by like half an inch or whatever. And we, like I said, we knew we had the amount. It's just we needed to get size at that point. And like I, I said, we were like and a half. maybe two, three fish ahead of them, but they were beating us by a half an inch. And then the last day, I think we pulled out maybe like ten or eleven that were that we could actually submit. So once yeah, once we started pulling those out, we kind of were a little bit more confident on that side. Yeah. Did Wait. you guys uh, get like a grand total of how many you guys caught over the Shoot. three days total? Do you guys remember or Roughly, estimate? Maybe like eight. I, I don't know. I don't want to say the wrong number, but it was up there. Yeah, I'd say 20 fish maybe because I think the, well. That you guys submitted. That we submitted. submitted. Probably 15. Just yeah, around 15. <laughs> <laughs> no, we don't want June but, fact checking us. <laughs> but yeah, maybe like 15. Yeah. Eight on the last day. Yeah. Dude, and he bit in the dirty stuff. How all the sand is all kicked up. Were there any like details that you were surprised with, like in terms of uh, how the competition went and like how it all played out? Um, not really. I think it was. I think at the end of the day, just think, just knowing or not knowing how hard the other fishermen are going to fish. You know what I mean? And. Just, I mean, the meetups at the end of the day were, were kind of nice and getting like a feel of whether people were going to go fishing or not. I, I wasn't at the meetups, but he would tell me what was going on. Um, but no, I wouldn't say nothing out of the, the ordinary. All right, I'm switching back to the Carolina rig. So I'm basically trying to pop it in place because there's rocks to the right and the left of this. So I'm just popping it, swimming it. Letting it hit the ground. And if I get hung up, I give it some slack. And then uh, we talked about it a little bit. Like, what are your biggest takeaways from these, like, experiences and these kind of tournaments? Uh, I would say just competition. I mean, we're, we're very competitive. So when it comes down to it, I think when it comes down to tournaments, we're out here trying to grind, trying to, trying to win. And then just the experience of being out here. I mean, we grew up fishing with my dad that's that's all he did it was just bait and weight the whole time so just just getting out here and kind of doing what he used to do and then just getting to know more people you know the, the fishing community we just really started getting into it with your videos and you know without without the tournaments we wouldn't be here you know we wouldn't be talking to you so yeah. it's, it's 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 a good time it's, yeah. it's good experiences yeah am i just coming out here fishing with my brother i mean trying to find some time to actually hang out with each other. We don't do much outside yeah. of fishing together. So when we actually hang out, it's just, it's fishing. Oh yeah. 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 And just the fact that it's a competition, you guys were able to win is kind of a bonus. <laughs> yeah. Oh, which always. was big on the last tournament. So once we actually got to pair up and be on the same team, it was a little nicer, a little nice dynamic between us. We didn't have to compete against each other <laughs> officially. <laughs> How was that losing to your brother on the first tournament? Uh, He's used to uh, yeah. it. <laughs> it wasn't bad. I mean, it was, it was cool. It was a good time Super regardless. So, yeah. And then uh, we were talking about it a little bit. It's just the connections that you guys make. Like, can you speak a little bit on that? Like how you've been able to connect with guys up north and yeah, all around? Just, I mean, just reaching out to people that I met at your Hook to Cook uh, tournament. And then just, I mean, just trying to learn from them. I mean, up north, striped bass fishing. It, that's what it's all about. You know, at the end of the day, I think we had that little conversation of, 
you know, it's, it's, who, it's who you know, it's who you do stuff with and have memories with. And at, at this point, you have more, uh, more opportunity to get to know more people and, you know, connect with them with things that you like to do. That's awesome. Any, any last, like, things that uh, you guys wanted to share with the community? Come out and fish. It's not expensive. Have a good time. I mean, you can bring, out, you bring your kids out. You can buy a combo for, like, $80, $90. That's basically what I fish with. It's a good time. Sums it up for me too. <laughs> <laughs> and the water's looking way too good, so. Oh yeah. Yeah, we'll be following them a bit today and uh, seeing what they do, see how they dissect the water, um, which there's always something to learn when you fish with other people. So definitely, like Luis says, open your horizons, reach out, meet people in the community who love to do what you do. And we'll catch you guys on the water. Day to day. Yeah. It's crazy. It was a perfect day for like to be able to notice that the Carolina rig works out, you know? Yeah. And is able to pull out big fish as well. Yeah. But I had to stick to the the jerk bait, so there's only so many that we pulled out today. But y'all you guys will see how many Ada pulls out. Fish on the Carolina rig. Six pound test. Let's go! <laughs> Rock fishing for surfers. That's a keeper. <laughs> Crappie sliders are producing. Baby. One, two, three, four, five, six. I need two more because I have two in my bag. <laughs> Fillets for days. One more and it's limits on the rocks. Ridiculous. Well, there's the limit. Yep. I'm going to call it. I'm going to call it. So out of all the fish today, probably 80% on the on the Carolina rig or more. But uh, <laughs> Omar got a giant one. Yeah, not bad first cast over there. Showing us how it's done. Yeah, on the Carolina rig. Yeah, first cast, right? Yeah, first cast, first time ever using Carolina rig. First fish on it. <laughs> you guys are nuts. <laughs> He's never thrown the Carolina rig. That's just mind boggling. Like this whole trip has just been wild. Like just the fact that you can catch perch near the rocks was mind blowing. How close some of them hit and then just how stacked up they were up and around the rocks. You guys think it might have anything to do with like the bonds? Probably not though, because our tournament was in September. Yeah, I think. Whatever it is, I don't know if they eat stuff off the rocks, but for some reason they hang out around the rocks and we started noticing where there was dirty water, where where you notice the clean uh, started getting dirtier. Right at that edge is where they, for some reason, were hitting. Um, couldn't tell you why, but it's not the first time I've seen it. So, for some reason they're out here, close to the rocks. Wow, yep. wow. And then, did you notice anything about, like, I, I don't think I got any females today. I didn't. This might be? That's a male, dude. Oh. I, I haven't seen a female with, like, a black chest like that. Yeah, no. no. Yeah, I noticed that, like, all of the ones that I've been catching today have been all male. That's been weird. Like, they even have a, a bit of semen. <laughs> or fit, Yeah. Oh. You could, did you notice that? Some oh. of your fish I have, even like, know what to look for. on that, on this part of the tail right here. Uh-huh. Um, it's it's covered in a white slime. Ooh, he's got some uh, juices. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's good to know. Yeah. So definitely male. But yeah, cool, dudes. Thanks. That yeah, dude. Day. Way to kill it over there too. <laughs> Turned it around. It was definitely last last minute heroics. Like it wasn't. It started off kind of slow, 
you know and and what we maybe had to wait for was that tide peak high tide we started getting them and as the tide actually started getting lower is when we really noticed the bite start picking up yeah luckily Things Luis called us he, he went back to that honey hole and <laughs> oh yeah we we went all the way over there me and Omar and then Luis called Omar and said hey I just picked up three so we marched right back over actually what you guys didn't see was there's this guy who was fishing next to us who brought up like four or five, like 14, 15 inches. Is that what this guy's doing too? That's dope. So we're definitely not the only ones out here doing it. It's not like he recognized us or anything. So might have been something that he's been doing for a while too. But it's new. I mean, I haven't, <laughs> this is the first time I've caught like quality perch off the rocks. One thing I wanted to let you guys know, man, like, I feel like we're like cut from the same cloth because we grind it out. Like even yeah. if we're like not cut, like catching anything, we're like, you know what? The bite might turn on, the bite might turn on. And then eventually it does. Yeah, you gotta keep at it. Yeah. Yep. That's proof right there. <laughs> That's right. Take it easy. We'll catch you guys later.